Hi, I wanted to introduce you to the Arduino Track uh, project. Uh, this is a uh, flight controller uh, for high altitude ballooning that uh, uh, Project Traveler Group has been uh, developing over the last uh, quite a few years. And it's, uh, it's finally ready to, uh, to show the public. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, two of the Arduino Track uh, systems that I have here. Uh, this is uh, what I'm referring to as the combined. So this board right here uh, is all that's needed to uh, fly. Uh, I've got just a two meter uh, rubber ducky antenna. You could put on uh, uh, whatever uh, SMA style antenna that you wanted to. Uh, just screw into the, the SMA jack there on the board. And uh, then of course it needs a little bit of uh, DC power and it can be fed from about seven volts up to about uh, 12 volts uh, into the DC power jack. And uh, then I've also got a, a variation of it, and this is what we've been flying for uh, quite some time. This is the uh, exact same board. Uh, the only difference is uh, this, uh, this board is using an external uh, transmitter. So through a, through a standard 6-pin, uh, uh, 0.1 inch plug, you can plug in any kind of uh, handheld or mobile radio, uh, any kind of data connection. Um, to go off to a, to a transmitter uh, that you want here and it can even feed uh, the full battery voltage or it can feed uh, regulated uh, 5 volt supply to the board. So on this uh, system I have a, an old Radio Shack uh, handheld radio that I've actually uh, gutted the, the batteries out of and it feeds, uh, uh, feeds 5 volts into that to power it up so there's nothing to do uh, at uh, flight time. It's just a matter of powering up this board and the radio automatically comes on. This board here is uh, it's basically an Arduino uh, uh, it's basically an Arduino uh, but it's technically in a shield uh, format so it plugs into to a uh, to another Arduino that actually holds the logic. So the flight computer is on this Arduino. Now this happens to be an Uno but it doesn't really matter uh, uh, what you've got. Uh, it collects the serial data coming from the GPS, which is on the shield. Uh, it collects that, makes the flight decisions, and uh, formats the packets to be sent out uh, via the radio. Once those packets are formatted, uh, they get sent back over to the Arduino track shield, where this uh, chip here modulates the X25 packets. Uh, filters it through a small op amp and then transmits it out to the uh, to the radio. So these uh, these boards would plug together like so, and so that would be the flight computer for a uh, for a two board uh, Arduino track. I've also um, taken a a shield and I've consolidated all the firmware down to a single chip and so this chip here can do the same thing as these the only difference is this chip is pretty well full in terms of uh, uh, both the flash and SRAM capacity so there's not a lot of extra capacity to do anything uh, extra other than just uh, send the position packets to get the Arduino track ready for flight, uh, there's a little bit of configuration that has to be done. Uh, in this case, uh, you load the Arduino uh, sketch onto this board, and you load um, a piece of uh, firmware to this through the Arduino software, but it, uh, it's not using the Arduino bootloader on this particular chip. And there's a separate uh, YouTube video on how to do that. Uh, but to do the basic configuration, all that's required is a USB cable and a piece of software on, the, on a laptop or a desktop PC. So we're going to configure this, set our call sign, and set the flight parameters. We'll plug it into USB. We'll pull up uh, the Arduino track configurator software, and I'm going to uh, scan for uh, the new COM ports. I'm going to come in here, uh, drop down the list, and I know that uh, this Arduino Uno uh, enumerates itself as COM port 29. So I'm going to select that COM port, and I'm going to ask it to uh, read the config. Uh, requires you to hit the reset button and it'll go out and it'll read the configuration off of this uh, Arduino Uno that's uh, stored in the EEPROM. So as you can see the call signs configured as W0ZC-0 uh, 
Uh, right now it's set up as a motorcycle symbol. Uh, the destination uh, path is APRS and it's set to a wide 2-1. And there's some other settings in here. So I'm going to go ahead and change a few of these things. I'm going to set this up for more of a typical balloon configuration. Change this over to W0ZC-11. Change this to a balloon symbol. Uh, APRS, I'll leave that at 0. I'm going to go ahead and leave the uh, wide 2-1 as the path. Uh, however, I don't want the uh, path to continue to go up all the way to altitude. I really only need that uh, close to the ground where we may not be in range of a, of a local eye gate here in Kansas. So I'm going to change this so that it disables the path above uh, 3,000 meters MSL. That'd be a little under 10,000 feet and uh, we're only under that altitude for uh, uh, you know maybe 15 minutes during the entire flight. So for the most part uh, there'll be no path used but uh, at low altitudes we will get a 2-1 for the path. On the beaconing tab uh, we've got uh, we've got four different basic options. Uh, the simple delay is uh, just a, a timer delay that counts down about 30 seconds. It's not exactly 30 seconds because it doesn't take into account the time that it actually takes to transmit the packets and some of the other uh, uh, odds and end uh, pieces that go into the processing here and there. But it's about 30 seconds. So if you just have uh, something that you want to transmit periodically, uh, this will uh, uh, set it for 30 seconds or you could set it for uh, 60 seconds or whatever, uh, whatever time interval you wanted. You can do speed-based beaconing, which is uh, pretty popular for uh, uh, like vehicles, uh, cars, things like that. So in this case, uh, below 15 knots, uh, it'll transmit every uh, 120 seconds. Between 15 and 50 knots, and that's configurable here. You could also change it to 45 or whatever you wanted. Uh, it'll run at that speed, and then above that, like on the highway, uh, it'll run at, uh, at every 50 seconds, for instance. You can do altitude-based beaconing. Uh, we fly this quite a bit on our balloons now. So below, uh, say, uh, 2,000 meters, so basically on the ground, I want to get a lot of data because I don't want to wait on it while I'm uh, verifying that all the systems are, are uh, set to fly. So I may set that down to 15 seconds. That also gives a nice rapid pattern uh, when you're uh, trying to, uh, uh, to find it out in the field. As you're driving down the street, you don't have to worry about uh, driving past it and not even hearing the thing. So here we have it set for below 2,000 meters. We're going to go over 15 seconds. Um, above, uh, you know, 20,000 meters, maybe up at altitude, uh, we might bump it back down to, you know, closer to 45 seconds, and that'll help us uh, get a better read for uh, when the uh, actual burst happens and and when we're uh, back on our way down. And uh, throughout the rest of the flight, we can just do a leisurely 60 seconds. And then it also supports time slotting, so if uh, you're flying with multiple balloons and you need to synchronize your transmissions to the uh, GPS uh, time, yeah, you can do that here, you can set them. Uh, if you have two different slots, uh, different times, you can set them to 15 and 45. Uh, if you just have a single slot, you could set both of them to the same and then it just transmit a single packet at 15 seconds past the minute. So those are the uh, beaconing options. I'm just going to set this back up here to about 20 seconds for uh, for test purposes. The last uh, bit is the uh, configuration um, tab and here we can type in a message. It defaults to Arduino track but we can uh, uh, set this to uh, flight uh, 2015 alpha and get it ready for uh, the next flight. The uh, checkbox is here. We can transmit a burst altitude which basically means that uh, it's going to watch the GPS and detect a a burst scenario. Uh, basically what that means is it's uh, it's fallen several hundred meters um, after it has attained a uh, significant altitude. I believe it's uh, 10,000 meters up. If it falls 500 meters after it's 10,000 meters in the air then it will uh, log that as a burst and it'll continually transmit that uh, maximum altitude throughout the rest of the flight. So that's uh, great for uh, tracking your absolute maximum burst, not having to uh, infer based on uh, uh, the prior and uh, the pre and post uh, altitude uh, records coming uh, pre and post burst. Transmit GPS fixed quality, that's useful for troubleshooting, especially on balloon flights. Uh, it just transmits 
uh, if you have a 2D lock, a 3D lock, and then also how many satellites are in view. The transmit system battery voltage, it uh, detects uh, uh, through the analog digital converter, it detects the voltage of the system battery and transmits, transmits that with the packet. And then there's also an, uh, an onboard air temperature sensor uh, on the shield uh, right up here and it'll transmit back the, uh, the Celsius uh, air temperature uh, coming off the board. Typically uh, the GPS uh, serial settings aren't uh, you don't need to mess with those if you use a, a standard, uh, this is a Telet uh, GPS receiver. Uh, the defaults on that is 9600 baud and you do not invert the data signal. But if you were uh, taking this Arduino and plugging it into an external, uh, external GPS antenna or GPS receiver, uh, you may need to adjust that and you can set that down to 4800 or 2400 baud. And uh, if you're having to invert for uh, uh, RS-232, uh, you know, plus or minus 15 volt levels down to TTL levels. Uh, you can also have it invert the, uh, the serial data signal uh, so you can interpret that data correctly. And finally, the last thing that we've got on here is there is a small status LED and uh, uh, it's right here down the corner. Uh, that LED uh, will flash various messages to you. Uh, it'll tell you uh, that the, it'll tell you that the board's booting up. It will tell you that uh, uh, the GPS signal uh, is missing, etc. And there's also a piezoelectric uh, a buzzer down here, and so you can turn that in on also. And so it's a great uh, audible warning if you suddenly lose your GPS signal while you're uh, preparing to launch or uh, uh, doing other troubleshooting. So I'll turn uh, the LED and the buzzer on. With all those uh, settings in place, uh, what we're going to do uh, is hit the upload and uh, it'll take just a few seconds here and it'll upload those configs up to the uh, to the Arduino and uh, now they're they're there and at this point we can uh, unplug the Arduino from the PC we can insert we can insert the uh, shield onto the Arduino and I've got a 7 volt lithium battery pack here plug this in we have the audible alert that uh, that was a K, which is telling us that the system's alive. And uh, turn the volume up here on my receiver, and uh, we'll hear the packet start coming across uh, from the uh, from the Radio Shack uh, radio. And again, this thing is configured for 144.39. And as soon as power is applied, as soon as power is applied to the Arduino track shield, uh, the Radio Shack uh, transmitter will come alive and start transmitting. So on, uh, fl on the morning of the flight, uh, all that's required is to uh, plug the battery in and the system's ready to go. So we heard one, uh, one packet there. Every uh, 20 seconds it will uh, send out another packet. There's another one. So those are the packets configured with the call sign, that, uh, call sign and parameters that we just configured. So that's how the, uh, that's how the uh, Arduino track shield works. And I also have the Arduino track uh, combined version here. Uh, it works basically the same way. It still has the shield here because uh, those pins, uh, a couple of those pins are required to do the initial programming of the chip. But uh, once the initial programming is done, you can uh, you can update the settings through the serial port right here. And I just use an FTDI uh, TTL level uh, adapter cable and I can plug directly in there to uh, ground, transmit, and receive and do the exact same configuration I just did with the USB cable. And this system doesn't need the carrier once it's programmed. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, plugging it in. It runs with the uh, radiometric uh, uh, module and you can see uh, it just transmitted the packet uh, that was generated there. And this one's configured similarly. It will uh, transmit uh, about every 30 seconds and send out the uh, data. Uh, right now we're in the basement, so we're not uh, GPS is not getting any valid signals, but uh, it is still nevertheless uh, uh, clicking away. So those are the Arduino track uh, boards, uh, both the uh, the standalone and uh, and the uh, combined. Now we've got uh, we've got uh, about a dozen cumulative flights between the two. Uh, boards. Uh, it's been a, 
an evolution uh, over the years. Uh, I've been trying different GPS engines, trying different uh, uh, processors, and finally I've settled on a system that's uh, quite econo economical and uh, quite simple and reliable to uh, get running. And with the Arduino development environment, it's also pretty easy to go in there and make changes. Uh, you could drive servo motors, uh, read other sensors, uh, whatever you wanted to, and incorporate that into the code. All that code has been uh, open sourced, and it's available on the Project Traveler uh, website, uh, as is the uh, hardware uh, for designing these boards. Uh, the, uh, the gerber files and all that are available for download, and you can uh, send off and have those etched and uh, build your own boards. So that's, uh, that's the Arduino track. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, love to hear uh, feedback from you if you decide to build one and uh, uh, fly it into the, uh, into the stratosphere.